Alright, welcome to my first Tower of Fantasy video. I don't know how many of these I will end up making, but I am in the unique situation of uh, getting early access to a preview build of this before it comes out in about a week with no real embargoes. There's a couple things I'm not supposed to talk about or show, I think, but it's pretty broad. Um, I wrote a First Impressions article about this earlier, and I wanted to expand about that a little bit and show off the game a little bit. The problem, <laughs> problem, the problem, is that I am stuck with this quest. So one of my friends was injured in an attack, or she was defending something and burned herself out. Uh, I am supposed to make her some food. I am supposed to go here. Nothing is here. I've reset the game many, many times. I have gone to other food cooking places and I cannot make food. So I am stuck uh, on this main quest line. And since the game is not out, there are no guides to consult about, um, <laughs> you know, how I uh, should get around this. And I have no idea. So I don't think my progress is going to carry over to the, the original, to the release game anyway. So it's not like the biggest deal in the world, but it is somewhat worrisome that this happens uh, in the main quest line and I might be an idiot and I just might be totally missing what I'm supposed to be doing here but none of the other quests have been that uh, weird. So okay so one thing I do like about this game there's a very cool uh, character creator system where you can make your own anime character, your waifu, your husbando, I don't know how to pronounce these words but you know whatever your, your cool male or female uh, anime character. This is a very very conservative uh, version there are some definitely more provocative options you can make i just i don't know i just thought this was cool i like her eyes um and this is like your main character for the course of the game uh however it doesn't really stay like that so one kind of odd thing about this is in order to integrate the gotcha mechanics into this game they have created a system uh, of simulacra where you pull other characters, and the lore explanation for this here is like these are digital reconstructions and memories of past warriors or something like that. And so they are just, you know, they are characters. Like this is, you know, if you're a Genshin Impact person, you will understand like building up a team of people. Uh, you can activate your simulacra, turn turn their tri I don't know what this is. I, I don't know all these things yet, but uh, they have special abilities to some extent. They have special skills. This is a, a five star. I think everybody gets this five star because this was like the first pull I made. So I don't know if this is especially impressive. Uh, but once you activate a simulacra, you will then be controlling the simulacra. Uh, so your base character goes away and you will now be this person. Um, and I don't know if there's a way to switch back and forth quickly. I, I don't know if you can switch between multiple simulacra fast either. I only have one, so um, this just seems like a little bit of a ham-handed way to uh, force the whole gotcha pull system into a game. I would rather keep my main character and upgrade her and buff her up over time with new weapons and armor and stuff. And while well, you can do that to a certain extent, Clearly the goal is to get you to pull a bunch of gacha characters. I think one of the things I'm not allowed to show is the shop. I don't know why. Maybe it's not finalized. It's just your typical gacha shop. You have little currencies that you will uh, spend for 10 pulls or one pull at a time. There's a mercy thing. There's a guaranteed. What It's it's a gacha system. It's just a normal gacha system, essentially. I don't know the full scope of if it's better or worse than Genshin. I also do not know how necessary it is. One good thing about Genshin was that uh, you could pretty much do anything in the game and not really have to worry about paying a ton of money. It was just if you really wanted those characters. Uh, so you head out into the world and this is what it looks like. It is, you know, it, it's a little bit in the same art style for sure. Like, you know, stuff, this is almost identical to Genshin stuff, which is in itself almost identical to <laughs> Breath of the Wild stuff. Um, but I haven't really been impressed with the level design here. Granted, this is just the starter area, but it just feels like kind of a hodgepodge. And it's just, there's no real kind of coherence to the level design here. Uh, and everything is just kind of like, oh, I don't know, here's this random thing, and here's this other random thing. And it's just, it's, it's sort of scattered everywhere uh, from bandit camps to random chests and things. And it just doesn't really work for me. Um, 
this is just a starting area, so uh, maybe it's not going to be that impressive, but uh, it's just something that kind of stood out to me. Is like, get, like Genshin and Breath of the Wild are like visually astonishing games in, in many ways, whereas this is just like aping their style without really having the same kind of aesthetic design. Like, again, there could be other areas that change this, but nothing really right out of the bat here has, has uh, landed with me. Um, this is a little name boss. If I kill him, I think I get some sort of achievement. There's like a bunch of name bosses scattered around here you have to kill. This is a pretty easy one. I don't know what exactly I am attempting to do here uh, with these. One frustrating thing, uh, so combat itself is fine. And it's got this like interesting uh, switch mechanic where you could switch to a bow. And then if you charge up enough um, shots or whatever, you switch back to your old weapon and it executes like some kind of special move. Uh, and you have access to kind of more weapons at a time. It's like two melee weapons and a bow or guns or something like that. Uh, I don't know how to manually aim bows yet. I have not figured that out yet. But um, so that's that's interesting. And there seems to be like a variety of, of tools and things you can use in combat as well. Uh, one thing I don't love is even though there, there is a focus on aerial combat, like you can double jump. Um, but there is no, this keeps happening to me where like I, I just want to jump up here. And there's all these like surfaces at this height or thereabouts where like that really seems like I should be able to get up there and I can't. There's no, well, you can climb uh, walls and stuff. For many areas, there are no like real mechanisms of, of getting up places that really seem like you should be able to get up. Uh, another thing that is very un-Genshin that this game does is uh, it has a uh, jetpack system. So if you want to get, you know, if this was Genshin, you'd have to do a glider and go down there and blah, blah, blah. Here, you have a jetpack. And your jetpack is like limited fuel and stuff and may not be like the easiest to navigate. Uh, when you dash, you get rid of your jetpack instantly after, which is kind of weird. But this like does help for getting around really quickly. And you can do aerial combat stuff with it too. Uh, I don't really understand. There's like, so now you can see in the right hand corner there, I have a hundred second cooldown on my jetpack where I can't use it again uh, in, until that happens, which is really weird for what seems like a pretty common mobility tool. I know you can upgrade your jetpack and stuff later, but I really don't like waiting around for uh, 100 seconds or whatever to get my jetpack back. It just seems like something I should be able to have access to. Um, around the map, you will find little chests. This is a password chest. You can do a perfect decipher, which gives you more rewards, and a forced decipher, which gives you less rewards. Don't know if this is something that gets sold. It might be. It might be something you earn. I don't know, but I am obviously kind of suspicious. Um, this is also a game that drops just a metric ton of currencies on you right away for weapon upgrading and augmenting and whatever this is and this is and like there's very little explanation here and you kind of have to figure out uh, everything yourself um you could store these are other weapons i've gotten through pulls in the past these are how much i've upgraded these weapons like since all this none of this carries over i haven't worried too much about investing in stuff that is not worth it um but like as you can see this just doesn't look that I don't know. There's just something about it here. You can see the overall map where... So I this is the starter island, so I'm looking at least toward the larger map. And this is a big zone, different re regions you'll unlock, and stuff like that. There are Ubisoft vision towers uh, that reveal parts of the map. There's only one vision tower for this whole map, so it doesn't seem like you'll be doing it a ton. But um, it's... I, I don't know. It's just something that is not really blowing me away here uh, in the initial time. Uh, is this going to be an overleveled area? I guess we'll find out. So um, combat is, is fun, I think. Uh, it's it's definitely something that's um, engaging on a base level. I like the distinction from Genshin in that this is like a techno-based thing as opposed to kind of more of a fantasy magic-based thing. Uh, I think there's certainly some room for there, room for stuff like that there. Uh, one issue is that Genshin is making um, Zenless Zone Zero, which is essentially, it's not this style, like it's not an open world game, but it is this aesthetic. So it is like cyborg people and guns and giant mechanical swords and things like that. Uh, I am 
very under level for this. I am level 11. These are 16. So this is actually one of the first times I've actually uh, I felt like I was under level for something, and I don't really lose that much health very often. So um, difficulty has not really been a thing at this point, um, and I'm just kind of this is like I don't have any objectives because I'm frozen on the main quest, but uh, I will. Do my best. I what one of these things I was fighting one time, and it just kept regening its health in a way that I literally could not get past. So I don't know what the uh, the deal was there. And something has negated my powers. Okay. And yeah, you have like special moves uh, with your various weapons. Uh oh, I was on fire. Okay, I died. That's the first time I've ever died. <laughs> so you auto return to camp, resurrect to camp. I don't know if this costs anything. I don't think it does. Uh, clearly, I was under leveled for that zone but you know i'm not exactly a, a combat master at this at this point either um i am skeptical of how this game is going to feel to invest in in the long term uh granted there are some aspects i cannot test right now i do not know what the mmo aspects are going to feel like this is a a very mmo centric game where you're there's supposed to be like world bosses and other characters rolling around and co-op missions and raids and like it, it's a lot more co-op based than genshin um I know I'm not going to have any, like, really, like, a dedicated raid group for this or anything, so it would be, have to be done through matchmaking. Uh, so, you know, I don't know how much I'm going to use those aspects of it. And just what one personal thing for me is, like, I have so much time and money invested in Genshin Impact right now. Like, if I am going to, you know, keep investing in a gacha game, I don't know if I have room on my plate for two, and I don't know if I'm seeing anything in this game that is uh, indicating to me that this is ultimately going to be a better experience than Genshin. I think Genshin um, hooked me right away from the beginning a lot more than this, and while this has some cool things I like, like the character creator and things like that, uh, I, I feel like, you know, Sumeru is coming to Genshin in a couple weeks, and like I'd probably rather return and do that than invest a ton of time in this game, which clearly is going to be eventually at least gearing me toward a lot of gotcha stuff and i just don't know if i have the patience for that i also like i have given you know i've made excuses for genshin's gotcha because it doesn't interfere with the game that much but like it also makes it kind of a limited quantity thing like i don't like have the time or budget to invest in tons of gotcha games uh whereas if this was like a more straightforward rpg where i just level up invest in my character blah 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 um that might be something i was more willing to do but they are clearly trying to capture that Genshin money. Like Genshin has made like $3 billion. So you definitely want uh, a piece of that if you are a developer of similar size and scope. And this is another Chinese developer. Um, I, you know, the, the quality of the game is something that is probably, I don't know what's going on here. This is a training field. Uh, the quality of the game overall is something that is probably too early to speak to, but um, I just don't know if this is going to have anything to make it really stand out to me to invest more than a short amount of time in. Um, maybe that will change with a ton of players, and once this bug is fixed, maybe the story will get really interesting or something, but so far I just haven't seen that, and like the most fun I had was doing the character creator, and that's kind of it. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, I am a little skeptical about this, but... Me, but that's mostly for me personally. Like, I'm not saying this game is going to fail or something, because, you know, Lord knows people love their gotcha games uh both here in asia but like everywhere so this very well could be like kind of a you know a major hit for all i know but this isn't this is kind of the opposite of genshin where like this looked really promising in previews and then one of those i'm actually playing it i'm like eh, it's just okay whereas genshin was like oh god i'm not gonna play a gotcha breath of the wild ripoff and then that ended up actually being like really good so i don't know what's going on i'm trapped myself in here uh so it's, it's a pretty opposite situation, and I don't know what the kind of ultimate verdict is going to be. I don't... What? Oh, wait. Okay. <laughs> it accidentally jetpacked. And blew up some barrels, because why not? Um, th th I do think there's probably a good amount of fun to be had here in, in certain ways. Uh, and once I learn maybe a little more of the systems and stuff, and unlock a little more stuff, I can uh, appreciate this a bit more. All right, I'm out of jetpack fuel. But for now, it's just it's just okay, and I will forgive this one game breaking bug I've run into in my kind of janky preview build. But we'll see what the ultimate product is. So, 
Uh, I'm, I'm going to play it at launch, and, you know, it's free, so you can check it out uh, regardless, but uh, we'll, we'll see. I'm, I, nothing here is, is really speaking to me uh, profoundly, and I'm, I'm curious if that will change with more time. So thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Take care.